All right, so we're back with our coverage of the uh, Windows 8 on an ASUS EEE Slate EP121. We're going to go ahead and power it on and show you how quickly the operating system boots from being powered off. So it actually comes up pretty quick. We were uh, a little bit surprised. Have the nice cartoon uh, fish there. And then we're already at the uh, login screen. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to get logged in here. Um, as soon as you hit this, you do get the keyboard. It's nice. You can hide your key presses here, which will prevent somebody from looking over your shoulder and seeing exactly what's going on. But for now, we're going to go ahead and log in without you on the screen. And we'll be back as soon as we're at the desktop. All right, so we've got our password typed in. We'll go ahead and hit enter. And you see it comes up pretty quickly. Now, one of the things that we've complained about in the past, and we're going to go ahead and talk about that here, is the fact that you can't move this around. It's not very configurable. Um, it's very static. For example, if we move over here and we look at some of these on the side, if I take this and I just want to drag it and I want to move it around, you see that it's automatically going to pull everything around. There's different ways that you have to get this stuff moved in order to take care of it. It just It's not very good as far as getting everything in play and organizing it. It's got what it wants. It has to fill in a certain way and it's just going to run this uh, desktop experience is going to be static. It's going to be very static and it, and it needs to be much more customizable and configurable so that somebody can organize this in the manner that they want. And one of the things that we did have a complaint about before was that there was no way to move back and forth between the screens. You couldn't get back and forth into anything. If I tap and I go into let's say weather, um, we're going to take a look at the weather application here. Um, so you can see once this comes up it's very nice looking. It's got a great uh, image, great background. Everything's you know looks really nice. But getting back was almost impossible. Now, with a quick swipe, you can hit the start button and we're back to the desktop. That was not present in the developer's preview. We tried pretty much everything. We tried hitting the, uh, the home button. Now the home button is something else entirely. We now have, a, it's a great feature that they've added in. Let's say we want to open up maps and we want to take a look at what's going on here. So we'll open up the Maps application, and if we push this, you see now we have a list of applications that are running in the background, as well as the Start. We can go back to the Start immediately and open up Internet Explorer. It's going to open up our Facebook page. So we can do the same thing, and now you see we have multiple apps. So we can go straight to Weather, or we can go right back to the Start screen. So they've included that in, which is very nice. It's a, a nice and clean interface. One of the things you'll notice that our mail application isn't working. It has a problem connecting with our Exchange server. Um, and the only thing it wants to display is your, uh, your Hotmail. Now we have things like uh, people and messaging. Messaging is a very nice application. We'll get into it in a little bit. Um, we do have Office 2010 installed. As soon as you open that up, it brings you to the desktop environment. So and you do have you know, pretty much everything else that you would need. You can get in here and look at you know, my computer, look at the different drives. Uh, your icons are going to be a little different. The response is uh, actually pretty quick. Uh, we do need to calibrate our touch screen for some reason it got out of calibration. And again, to get back, we can tap here and hit the start menu and we're good to go in there. All right? You see we have everything. We've actually put some of these icons on the desktop including Photoshop. Um, we also listed administrative tools and removed some of them. Now in order to remove them you will need a mouse because you have to right click. And unfortunately, there's no right click here. Even though we hold this down, when we hold it down, it doesn't give me the option to remove it. It just starts opening everything up. So that's one of the downsides of this. We've got our Windows PowerShell. Let's go. And again, you can do that here, and it's going to give you options for everything that you have going on. You have your Start Menu Settings, which again, you don't have a whole lot. You can show Administrative Tool. You can clear the personal information. So, and you can power it off from here. You can also change your notifications, what hits there. You can do, go to more PC settings, which opens up your settings window, which is pretty nice. It gives you a lot of the different uh, items. You know, home group, Windows update is right here. General, everything that you have going on. Your app switching, you can switch between different applications. Move back and forth. Sharing, if you want to share. Um, if you want to use different applications to share. Here we have mail turned on. We'll go ahead and turn that off. Search. This will let you choose what applications you want to use to search for. You can use uh, store, photos, people, music. Each one of these applications is actually going to allow you to do different types of searches. Now we'll go ahead and we'll get back out of this. So we'll go back to the start menu and we're going to take a look at the music app. This is going to look very familiar to you. Um, of course, we're using a local account. We're not using a Microsoft uh, Live account. 
and the music application at this stage, it's actually a preview, is not going to allow us to get into this without actually having that account set up as a Windows Live account. This is actually a down, uh, you know, it's pretty much a drawback. We're not happy about that. We did send some feedback and hopefully Microsoft will do something about it. The interface is going to look an awful lot like their Zune interface, which is basically what this is. It's a takeoff from Zune. It's just moving it into that realm where it's going to be a Windows application here. And again, we can just open back up and go straight back to the start menu, which is nice. And we'll take a look, quick look at the Microsoft Store. Inside the Microsoft Store, you have your different things. You know, you have uh, your free applications. You can click on that. A lot of these are pre-installed. Um, and some of them you can just grab and they install very quickly. Um, like let's take one, uh, Vimo. You see it pops up. It actually has an interface that's very similar to the uh, Android Store. So the Android Market. And it's, it's nice, it's clean. You can get details, you can get reviews. Of course, you're not going to have a whole lot of reviews here. Some of them are pretty bad. This is a very early beta. Well, it's a pre-beta. Well, it's not really a pre-beta, but it's an early uh, you know, version of the store. A lot of the applications do not install. We tried to install a couple yesterday, and most of them failed. As far as social networking, there's not a whole lot here. If you click on social networking, the only thing you have is WordPress. Uh, not exactly the, the best way to start out. We would have thought that Facebook or something like that would have been a good one. But again, it's still it's very early in the game, and Microsoft has a long way to go, even if this is launched in November. So that pretty much covers a lot of the interface. You can see it's very smooth. Uh, I think one of the reasons they went with a graphically simple and a static size for these icons is because it's easier for it to do a screen redraw. When it's doing this, it's not actually having to run very hard and it can just redraw this very quickly and very simply. So it's just, you know, again, a very simple overlay. Uh, photos, we don't have any photos on here except for the ones that are in there, but you do have, you can log into different ones. You can log into your Facebook, Flickr, SkyDrive photos, or if you have something in your pictures library. But unfortunately, we don't have any pictures in there. And uh, this is still an app preview, so we haven't allowed it to talk to our Facebook application yet. And again, there you can see just the overview. We're going to go ahead and we're going to install some additional programs. We do have Photoshop installed. This is the trial. So it's going to pop up here in just a second. It, it's, it loads fairly quickly. Um, we do think that there's some issues running on Windows 8, possibly some of the driver. The differences in the driver profile from what it was in Windows 7 to Windows 8. However, it's still fairly fast. And it's uh, got a decent feel to it. And once we get our touchscreen calibrated, which will be later today, then we'll have a, a much better feel for how it actually operates with inside the touchscreen. Now we're going to take a look at the control panel here, and we're going to take a look in Device Manager. One of our big issues and one of the problems that we had with Windows 8 in the past is the fact that not all of the drivers work. As of now, we've uh, resolved the issue with the ACPI. Please install the a uh, SUSE ACPI driver. That is gone, so we have some of our hotkeys, as you saw. We can use our hot button here. We can push it, and it'll actually allow us to you know, act as a Control-Alt-Delete. But we're still having a problem with our Bluetooth module. We've tried almost every driver that we can think of. However, it's still coming up as non-operational. We can't get a Bluetooth keyboard, which came with this model, or a Bluetooth mouse to actually connect and operate. So that's one of the pieces that we are still working on. Uh, the G sensor, uh, for the most part, does not work either. We've kind of been playing with that, and we still don't have it operational, regardless of what uh, position we put the switch in. So we're just not getting that running right now. Again, that's another one that we're going to contact ASUS about so we can see if we can get that operational. The volume buttons, however, we do have that finally working, which was one that we didn't have working in our developer's preview. So we, we have some progress here. Things have come a long way. ASUS does not have any Windows 8 specific drivers, so we're using Windows 7 drivers. And we've had to use some kind of tricks to get them to install. All of the installer packages we set up to run in Windows 7 and we gave them administrative permissions to do their installs that helped us get to the point that we're at right now. Um, of course we do have Flash installed, that's for the desktop version of Internet Explorer. That's this one here, that's going to pull up and it will run Flash inside this one, however the Metro version is not going to pull up Flash. So we've got that, and then of course to get back we just hit start. So that's it for now, we're going to go ahead and get some games installed on here, uh, some tablet style games such as Plants vs Zombies, other things like that, and we'll be back to show you that kind of performance as well as we're going to move into some of the other applications 
and give you an idea of what each one of these new applications that comes inside Windows 7 is like when, once you get it operational. And we'll also take a look at some of the newer features. One, well, actually one thing I do want to cover before we go here is we're going to take a look at the desktop. One of the new features inside this is that you can actually mount an ISO uh, uh, image, a uh, disk image, directly in Windows 8. This has been a long time coming. Uh, it's been something that Microsoft has needed to do going all the way back to Windows XP. We're finally seeing that here. So that's another thing we're going to do. We have uh, you know, a lot of different uh, in disk images that we use for installation that we pull from either TechNet or some of the other developer connections that we have. We'll put a couple of these on here and show you how quickly and easy it is to actually mount these in this, especially on a tablet that's going to be huge moving forward. So we've got that and we also have a few other items. For example, if we click down here, we'll take a look at Task Manager, which Microsoft has completely revamped. It is very clean. It's a nice look. You can uh, actually change and remove some of the details. Performance is going to give you a lot more information than it has in the past. You can actually look at everything directly here. You can switch back and forth. This is our memory usage. Uh, we have our Wi-Fi usage here. Everything, your application history. This is going to show you the applications that have run and what they've used as far as network connectivity system uh, CPU time all of that and you can also look at your metered network which is a nice feature if you were running this let's say on a 3G or 4G connection so you can track exactly what you're using here and what application is perhaps eating up your bandwidth you have your startup it's very quick and clean you can pull and remove you can actually take a look at what your startup uh, startup impact is how much this is going to impact your startup times uh, users you have your details here about each of your applications and your services and then of course your services tab all the way in the back so again Microsoft has improved a lot of these functions they just need to clean up some other items one of the things that we have found in this developer or in this beta copy that we don't like is that there is an option if you take a mouse and you drag it down here perhaps we can get it to pop up with our finger again you can sometimes get a start button to pop up. However, if you actually have a mouse, there it goes, it'll pop up. The problem is, is that no matter what we do, as soon as you touch it, it goes away. When you have a mouse attached, which we'll go and get a mouse here in just a second, there's a lot of options you can do directly from that mouse um, that you cannot do on a tablet. So Microsoft needs to come up with something that will let you get into that. And like I said, we'll, uh, we'll go get a mouse and we'll show you exactly what those options are here in just a second. Okay, we're back and we have our mouse installed here. So I'll show you what we're talking about. If you come down here, you can actually, uh, if you come down here into the corner, you can actually click in this corner and go back to the start screen. But you can also come down here and right click and you have quite a few options. You have run, search, Windows Explorer, control panel, task manager, command prompt. You can open all of these programs and features. It's almost like a small control panel on a menu that's directly over here in the corner that you can only access when you have a mouse. That's something that's a little bit frustrating from a uh, standpoint of user interface on a tablet, especially on a tablet. One of the other problems that we ran into, even though you have this over here, which gives you a lot of options, when you use the Internet Explorer on the front window, as soon as you tap anywhere in here, it's difficult to get that back now. It's going to zoom, but as you can see, it doesn't give me my options down here to pull up my pull up my window until I, you know, there's some exaggerated gestures that you actually have to use. Whereas it's very simple with a mouse to simply right click and get those same options. So Microsoft does need to work on that, perhaps add another swipe gesture in there somewhere that's going to let us pull that up a little bit easier. All right, well that's got that for now. Once we, uh, when we get back to you, we're going to take a look at the calendar, uh, people, messaging. We'll uh, throw some photos on here to show you how that works out as well as put some videos. We do have uh, uh, we have played with Media Center, which is kind of a nice, it's the same interface that you had before, so there's nothing really changed there. We'll take a look at the SkyDrive application, as well as dive a little bit deeper into some of these other applications that are here on the front. And we'll also take a look at getting one of the applications from the store to load. So that's it for now. This is the interface. You can see it's pretty nice. Microsoft has done a good job on it. However, there's still some serious work that they can do. Some of these larger live icons. Uh, the live tiles just really need to change and Microsoft needs to give the user a little bit more freedom to customize the look of their desktop. For example, the way these are laid out now, I would actually prefer to have my live tiles across the top instead of scattered all over the place. I can see my weather here, 
but I would much prefer to be up here in, some, in an area where I see it at the top and it doesn't clutter the rest of my icons. There's no way to do that on this screen. Uh, Microsoft, it's all set to auto. We've looked through every setting and there is no way to tell this, let me put these wherever I want, like you could do on a Windows desktop. So that's kind of a failing of the Metro UI. Not exactly a, you know, a fan of the Metro UI. That's something we've never been shy about saying. And Microsoft definitely needs to change a lot of these things and work on this before they release this to the general public. Fortunately, that's exactly what the consume, uh, consumer preview program is for, is to get that feedback not only from people like myself, but also from just general consumers that want to download this and get it installed on their laptops or even other tablets. So we'll be back in a little bit and we'll show you uh, some of the newer applications and some of the games.